Welcome back to Teresa Lyons, creator of Navigating Autism and Eat to Heal Autism. And this week's Ask Dr. Lyons question is, what genetic changes are associated with autism? Missense mutations contribute to at least 10% of autism diagnosis. So let's quickly understand the types of mutations so a sentence like that actually makes sense. Types of mutations. So we will learn about the types of mutations and their impact on protein function. That's really the key point to mutations, is what is the impact? And the impact is not the same for every mutation. Mutations are classified by the effect on DNA or the encoded protein. Here's a figure that shows DNA going to RNA going to protein. This is, this is the biological flow of that process. So up here in transcription, that's DNA right here going to RNA. And I'm going to speak in very simple terms here. So we have transcription DNA going to RNA. And you can see here, this is something called a codon. So you have three base pairs and in biology, they call that a codon. The RNA then gets translated to proteins and proteins are made up of all different types of amino acids so here again you have the codon so you have three base pairs that make up a codon and one codon refers directly to a, one amino acid so three base pairs in dna or rna then downstream gets translated into one amino acid for the protein and this is how our body makes the proteins that we need in order to survive and, and function and really thrive. So a little bit more about mutations. So here's a figure and up at the top, you can see here we have RNA. This is just an example. We have RNA on the first line and on the second line, this is, it's called a polypeptide, but you can think of it as a protein. So you, once again, you have three base pairs. So the first one, G, C, U, that first codon, is translating to alanine in the protein. So a silent mutation means that this A was changed to a C in the RNA, but yet there was no difference whatsoever in the protein that resulted. So there was no change, it's a silent mutation. The protein essentially is the same, at least in this area. A missense mutation is, you can take a look here, there's a mutation here. In the original RNA, it was a G, now it's an A. And so now you have a different amino acid that is in the protein. So this is called a missense mutation. Now another mutation is called nonsense mutation and you can see here we have a u here in the base pair where in the original rna we had a c and now what the protein does is it stops it's coded to stop so that means it stops making any more protein and the last mutation that i'm covering here is a frame shift mutation so you can he see here there's a mutation this is a C, whereas in the original RNA, it was an A, and that just shifted everything. So it's a frame shift mutation. So the C was inserted here, it pushed everything down. So now look at all these resulting different amino acids that are incorporated into the protein. So these are basic types of mutations that can occur that might or might not have an effect. So other mutations. Mutations outside the coding region can also occur. So in that example I was showing you, I was showing you the different, well, I can just switch back to it. In this example that I've shown you up here, this RNA, this is what we call a coding region. So a protein is actively being built, but not all RNA means that a protein has to be built from that RNA. So that's what happens when you have a mutation outside the coding region that can occur. So you might have something like a termination signal 
that is mutated, a ribosome binding site. The ribosome is the actual molecular machinery that helps assemble those new amino acids. You can have mutations in the promoter or enhancer sites. So again, these do not have to do with any of the coding for the proteins. These are outside of those protein coding sites. You can also have splice donor and acceptor sites. Now mutation classification. You could have a loss of function. So what that means, you have complete loss of function of the protein, or you can reduce the function of the protein to work. So when you have a different amino acid, it might cause complete loss of function of that protein, or you just might have a protein that doesn't work as well as it could have if it didn't have that mutation. You can also gain function. So sometimes there are mutations that causes a gain of function. So it can increase the protein's ability to function or a new function occurs. So let's get back to that first sentence that I said in the beginning of this video about in 2014, it was calculated that missense mutations contribute to at least 10% of autism diagnosis. So you now know a midsense mutation means that the resulting amino acid is different. We had a G up here in the RNA. It's now changed to an A, and that results in a different amino acid in the protein. That's what a missense mutation is. And in 2014, it was calculated that missense mutations contribute to at least 10% of autism diagnosis. The other thing to take into account with genetics and biology is tolerant versus intolerant. So mother nature has thought of lots of different things and mutations can occur in tolerant or intolerant genes. Tolerant genes just mean that they carry more mutations than expected if just by chance. And intolerant genes carry fewer mutations than expected if just by chance. This is all information that scientists take into account when studying autism and genetics. So if you do genetic testing and your child has some type of mutation, there's a lot more to understand than just the gene, let's say, that it occurred in. There's so much more important information to know about that specific mutation. So you might be thinking, what good is genetics, right? There's, there's mutations, but then there's all different kinds of mutations, intolerant genes, tolerant genes, missense mutations. There's, there's a variety of things. So when presented with such diverse genetic involvement as there is in autism, common biological mechanisms is a way to try and relate all this seemingly unrelated data. And just to remind you some of the facts that I went over in the last video is it's estimated that there are about 1,000 genes involved in autism. Which means that no one gene is likely to explain more than 1% of cases. In my next video, I'll go into more about those specific genes. I'll go into the common biological mechanisms. So. Stay posted for the next video. If you like this video, please like it. You can certainly drop a comment if you'd like. And if you want to read any references, here they are.